In this video, we will examine the role of remote access in today's networks. We will discuss virtual private networks and the encryption and authentication protocols used to secure our remote access. Today's highly mobile workforce is dependent upon persistent access to our data. Most organizations will meet this need by providing some method of remote access allowing users some degree of access to their internal network over the public internet. Given the fact that this access is taking place over the internet, protecting data from unauthorized disclosure is critical. A virtual private network, VPN, provides a secure connection between endpoints, routers, clients, servers, in order to allow protected access over public networking space. Privacy is ensured through the use of a variety of VPN protocols for both encryption and authentication. It is through these protocols that tunneling is achieved, in which data is encrypted and then encapsulated inside another data packet for concealment. It is this tunneling that allows the private information to flow securely in public network space. The most common encryption protocols are Point-to-point -point protocol, PPP, is an internet standard for sending IP packets over serial point-to-point -point links. Its most common use is for dial-up, meaning that this protocol has been mostly deprecated. Point-to-point -point tunneling protocol, PPTP, is a Microsoft protocol that improves on PPP by providing tunneling and data encryption for the PPP packets. It uses the same authentication mechanisms as PPP, and it too is mostly deprecated. PPTP is backwards compatible to Windows 95 and is still supported primarily because of its backwards compatibility. As with anything that is backwards compatible, there are significant security issues and PPTP should be avoided if at all possible. Layer 2 Tunneling Protocol, L2TP, is a non-proprietary protocol that enables tunneling of PPP sessions over various network protocols such as IP, ATM, and Frame Relay. L2TP is specifically designed to provide tunneling and security in client-to-network and network-to-network -network scenarios. L2TP does not have its own encryption mechanism. It instead uses IPsec transport mode for authentication and non-repudiation. Secure Socket Tunneling Protocol, SSTP, uses HTTP over SSL and encapsulates the IP packet with a PPP header then with an SSTP header. The IP packet, PPP header, and SSTP header are then encrypted in an SSL session. SSTP has the added benefit of using TCP port 443 since it is using SSL, and therefore you will not run into issues of a network firewall blocking the port that you are attempting to VPN over, which is not an uncommon event with some other VPN protocols. Common Authentication Protocols Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol, CHAP, is an encrypted authentication protocol that was developed to avoid sending passwords in plain text. CHAP uses MD5 hashing and a challenge in response to perform authentication without exposing the user's credentials. In the CHAP process, the client requests a connection to the remote access server. The remote access server responds with a challenge sequence known as a nonce. The client uses its password as an encryption key to encrypt the challenge sequence and sends the modified sequence back to the server. The remote server encrypts the original challenge sequence with the user's password as stored in its database and compares the received sequence with the sequence that it just generated. If the two sequences match, the passwords are therefore the same and the user is allowed to connect. If the passwords do not match, the password submitted does not match the password stored so the user is not allowed to connect. Password Authentication Protocol, PAP, is an authentication protocol that sends usernames and passwords in plain text. 
it is used only for backwards compatibility and should be avoided at all costs. Never transmit passwords in plain text. Remote Authentication Dial-In User Service, RADIUS, is an open standard protocol that provides centralized remote access authentication, authorization, and auditing services. When a network contains multiple remote access servers, they can all be configured to point to one central RADIUS server. The remote access servers, then acting as RADIUS clients, forward authentication requests to the RADIUS server for verification against the authoritative database of users. Network Policy Server, NPS, is Microsoft's solution for RADIUS, and just like RADIUS, is designed to work in both VPN and wireless environments. In earlier versions of Windows, NPS was known as Internet Authentication Services, IAS. Terminal Access Controller, Access Control Systems, TACAX, and TACAX Plus protocols provide centralized authentication and authorization services for remote users. TACAX Plus also supports multi-factor authentication. TACAX Plus is considered more scalable and secure than RADIUS. Kerberos is an authentication service that is based on a time-sensitive ticketing system. It can be used to manage access control for multiple servers using a centralized authentication server. In the Kerberos process, first the user logs on to the domain. Next, the user requests a Ticket Granting Ticket, or TGT, from the Kerberos server. Then, the Kerberos server responds with a time-stamped TGT. Next, the user presents the TGT back to the authenticating server and requests a session ticket to access a specific resource. The server then responds with the session ticket. The user presents the session ticket to the resource. Then finally, the resource authenticates the user via the ticket and allows access. In this video, we examined the role of remote access in today's networks. We discussed virtual private networks and examined the encryption and authentication protocols used to secure our remote access. In our next video, we will look at public key infrastructure with certificate authorities.